Pull up. Frank. Headshot. Hello and welcome to this week's episode of Medspiration. Statistics tell us that nearly one in every three individuals will be involved in an alcohol-related car crash in their lifetime. Now whether you drink to calm down, to turn up and celebrate, or to get over disappointment, it's important for each and every single one of us to understand the implications of how alcohol affects our health. That's why today we'll be going inside the human body and analyzing the step-by-step -step changes the body undergoes from the moment we take our first drink to the moment we become intoxicated all the way into the next morning when we might be hung over. By the end of this episode, we'll have a fundamental understanding of why drinking in moderation is key to our overall health. Enjoy. Alcohol caused some 3.3 million deaths in 2012, equivalent to about 5.9% of all global deaths. That's more than AIDS, TB, and violence combined. As we take our first drink, it almost immediately affects our organs and our state of mind. It changes our blood pressure and alters the way our heart beats. When alcohol enters our stomach, Approximately 20% of it is rapidly absorbed into the bloodstream and the rest is absorbed while it gets processed through the GI tract. Once it enters the bloodstream, it can diffuse into almost every biological tissue in the body since cell membranes are highly permeable to alcohol. It can also irritate and inflame stomach lining which can lead to ulcers and bleeding of the stomach. When the lining is severely eroded, it can eventually lead to anemia. Meanwhile. The brain is also undergoing drastic changes. There are three particular regions that are most vulnerable to alcohol's effects. These include the limbic system, which is responsible for emotions such as fear, pleasure, and anger, and drives such as hunger, sex, and dominance. The cerebral cortex, which alters our ability to think, solve problems, remember, and learn. The cerebellum, which controls the motor coordination and balance. When we drink, alcohol significantly affects the brain cells in these regions. Some synapses accept the signal more frequently, others become totally blocked. The more we drink, the more extreme the effect. After crossing the blood-brain barrier, alcohol affects several neurotransmitter systems, including GABA, glutamate, serotonin, dopamine, and the endogenous opioids which are the body's naturally occurring painkillers. As we get deeper into the night and have more and more drinks, there will be a price to pay later. The next morning, it's our liver that cleans the mess. The liver is the body's biochemical control center. It performs over 500 functions. One of them is to convert poisons like alcohol into harmless chemicals. The process requires water, and the liver doesn't care where it takes it from. Usually it's the brain that suffers the most, since it is 70% water. Water and essential salts are sucked from the brain, as it shrinks away from the skull. We experience a very particular type of headache, a hangover. As people age, their brain shrinks, on average, at a rate of about 1.9% per decade. That's considered normal. But drinking speeds up the shrinkage in certain key regions of the brain, resulting in memory loss and other symptoms of dementia. This is one of the reasons why it is recommended that we remain adequately hydrated while drinking, and also why we presumably develop the urge to drink large quantities of water when we are hungover. In addition to these side effects, drinking can also inflame the pancreas. Chronic pancreatitis interferes with the digestive process, causing severe abdominal pain and persistent diarrhea. Perhaps the greatest side effect of chronic alcohol abuse is the increased risk of cancer. The propensity of contracting cancer increases in all sites that alcohol can enter. This involves cancers of the mouth, pharynx, larynx, esophagus, liver, 
breast, and colorectal region. Alcohol's effects on our brain and body depends on the way we choose to drink, such as how much and how often, as well as our age, gender, and overall health status. Although the health risks clearly outweigh the benefits, moderate consumption has been shown to decrease risks of coronary heart disease. The National Library of Medicine defines moderate alcohol consumption as no more than three drinks on any day and no more than seven drinks per week. It is very important to note that alcohol is completely contraindicated in pregnancy. With that said, it's very important to drink responsibly and to avoid drinking and driving. So the next time you feel a little intoxicated, don't hesitate to call a Lyft, to call an Uber, or to have a designated driver. Because what that designated driver does is he allows you to live another day. And now what that does is it allows you to live and party another day, ladies and gentlemen. That's it for today, folks. If you guys enjoyed this episode, don't forget to give it a huge thumbs up. And if you haven't already, click subscribe and become a part of the Healthiest Family on YouTube. We would love to have you. Thank you, guys. As always, I really appreciate your time, and I hope you have a wonderful day. Peace. Hey, guys. So I made this video because one of our Instagram followers recommended it to us. So if you guys have a very creative idea or a video that you would like to see, be sure to comment below and I'll see what I could do.